Hi, I'm Tim. Join me in this video as we go over a description, unboxing, and test flight of the Ruko U11 Mini 4K sub 250 gram drone. Let's get to it. So this is a Ruko U11 Mini um, 4K drone. The reason it's a Mini, it's under 250 grams. That means per the FAA, no registration, no remote ID is needed. It's really quite a lightweight drone. Um, you saw on the opening pictures of the uh, aerial shots of the drones, the pictures are just fantastic. And that's pretty much the whole reason we get a drone is to take pictures. It is a three axis gimbaled um, camera. Uh, 4K, 30 frames per second for the video, uh, 8K for the still pictures, and it just does a very good job with flying. So let's go over a few specifics of the drone as we go, go through this. First of all, it comes with everything. We'll do an unboxing here in a moment with the drone. It comes with three batteries, so they claim 32 minutes of flight time per battery. This is what one of the removable battery looks like um, in the drone itself. Of course, a battery built into the controller, pretty much a standard controllers with the various controls, uh, sticks, smartphone goes here, then the connecting toggle over to, to um, your smartphone here. So that is located right here. The drone does have a slot on the side for a memory card, which goes in right here. Okay. I have had not a lot of luck getting this little memory card to format um, properly. This is the reader here. I use an iPhone. If any of the viewers have information on comments that can help me out of that, um, go ahead. I just, it just doesn't seem to work. For the smartphone and Apple iPhone, it's not too much of a problem because I can get all the pictures to my camera just with an airdrop, get them over to the main computer. That's what I do with an iPhone. And it, the formatting could be a problem with Apple versus Android computers. Included also in the kit are three of these charge cables to charge um, the in-flight batteries as well as the transmitter. And they plug into a USB port. You have to get something to plug into wall for a USB port. I have this Ruko 65W advanced charger, which works very well. Um, you, there are other ways to plug it in. You just have to get this USB connector plugged in. And then this goes to the batteries on the drones. I do have a few notes, technical points on the drone. I'm going to refer to my notes here. As I mentioned, there's no FAA registration, no remote, no remote ID required because it's under 250 grams. 8K of the photo resolution, 4K of the video quality, that's super high quality with an advanced camera, so that works fine. The flight range, they claim out to 6 kilometers and 20,000 feet. Um, keep in mind, per the FAA regulations with drones, whether we're flying recreationally or commercially under Part 107, you have to keep sight of the drone. And so someday in the future and beyond uh, visual line of sight is approved, this will be of, of use. But right now, even though this is a very extended range, you have to keep sight of the drone. Uh, this is being filmed in April of 2025. Three-axis brushless gimbal seems to work very well with the camera from my experience looking at the uh, video. And then they have cruise control, a bunch of smart flight features will go through as we go through the software and a very good positioning system uh, with GPS, uh, barometric altitude hold, optical flow for indoor flight and so forth. So again, a very nice drone. Um, let's go ahead and do an unboxing, look at all the components, go into a little bit more detail how everything talks to each other, uh, review the FAA regulations and recreational flight rules and take it out for a test flight. So I always like to take a look at the box. Very nice presentation along here. Uh, some features on here. They do mention that it's below 250 grand, so no FAA worry. That means you don't need to worry about um, remote ID or registration. It's got a CMOS camera, and the CMOS stands for Complementary uh, Metal Oxide Semiconductor. It's a very advanced camera to um, uh, just give a, just a more impressive picture, especially at distance and uh, different light conditions. 
8K picture, 4K, 30 frames per second video, and then three axis brushless gimbal, which will be important for stabilized pictures. And then also uh, QRC codes to get the app needed to uh, use it with your smartphone to fly in. So let's now take a look at what's inside this box. This is a carrying case that the U11 Mini comes in, so we'll do an unboxing, unwrapping. Uh, this is the first time I have seen it as well, so we'll do this together. Very nice case. Uh, as usual, the user's manual, and there's a quick start guide in here, so that's good to have. Here is the presentation of everything in here, the very helpful cardboard cutout. It reminds you which way the sticks go, uh, what the various buttons do. In case you don't fly it uh, on a regular basis, it's a good reminder for that. It just goes over the, um, the uh, transmitter. This is the drone itself. Safety plastic coverings here. A covering uh, for the camera. The full access on the camera here, which is good for stabilized pictures. And then notice that this does have three batteries. So this is a battery, the third one, that's inside the drone itself. And the other two batteries are here. So that's good to have three batteries for more flight time. And you see it's a pretty small drone to be under 250 grams. This is the transmitter as well with the various protective coverings. We'll take that off later. And the normal switches, sport, uh, cinematography, the controllers here. And again, these little sticks here just screw into place. And that's that. And so it's all pretty standard. And again, this lifts up. And this is where we'll place our smartphone to uh, fly the drone. These, as I mentioned, are the other two batteries. So that's good right there. Finally, inside here are the various things needed to fully operate the drone. So these are the cords to connect the camera to the transmitter. Take a quick look at this. These are the charging cords. Remember, there's two batteries. There's a battery in the uh, controller, the transmitter, and the other one um, is in the drone itself. These are just some uh, spare parts. And finally, some uh, blades on here. Remember, with these drones, there will be uh, different letters on the blades. There will be an A and a B. You need to put on the correct letters, the correct place, because they rotate in different directions, uh, just to make sure the drone uh, flies properly. So again, that's the unboxing. Everything's in there. It looks like it's really ready to go. Nice lightweight drone with the fully gimbaled camera. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. So let me charge up the batteries and then we will take it for some test flights. Let's take a quick review of the FAA regs on uh, recreational flyers and what the rules are. They define what a recreational flight is just basically for your own enjoyment and pleasure. And here are the rules right here. Recreational purposes, follow safety guidelines, keep your drone within visual sight, give way to other aircraft, stay in a controlled airspace unless you have permission, and fly at or below 400 feet in Class G, which is uncontrolled airspace. Again, no need for registration for, these, for this lightweight drone. This is another note from the FAA's website. Do you need to register your drone? And the answer is no for recreational flight if it's 250 grams or under. Here are all the components in the box for the uh, drone. We've got the two connectors for your smartphone to the controller. One of the three batteries, you can see the middle one is plugged into the USB charger. Very nice to have all these chargers available for uh, getting ready to fly. Again, another charger, USB plugged into the controller itself. That battery is internal. The drone itself, the little cardboard overlay, which is a very handy feature to um, have spare blades and um, tools to fix it. And finally, the instruction manuals, which are quite good, very good instruction manuals, help you out with your flying a lot. This cardboard overlay is a nice feature. If you don't fly periodically, you just put it on there, see what the various buttons and sticks do. There's a lot packed into that controller. This is uh, some pages of the manual, the QRC code to get the app required to fly the drone. This is an example of the diagram. It just lists everything on the drone, the controllers, what they do, just a lot of good information. In this case, uh, page, they talk about the intelligent flight modes, and we'll show you where those fit in. So go, go ahead and do some test flights with the um, mini controller here. So this is the controller. Uh, this is the drone itself with the battery installed. And then a smartphone that goes here. That's how you fly the drone off of that. So what we'll do, first of all, is we'll take this um, my phone here 
and we will go to the app, which is Ruko right here. This is the screen, just a, a, a screen saver here. This is the Mini 4K. You can pull it down for other drones if you want. We'll do the Mini 4K. And the controls is when we're flying. So what we're going to do, we'll put this in place. Notice that the connection from the smartphone to the uh, controller is through this cable. And I use this plug located here. Just going over the controller to start the drone. We go like this. You'll see it will start up. We'll be in the normal speed uh, for flying. This turns it on or off. Once it started, this will cause the drone to go up and down. And with this one, it goes up and down, but then it turns on its vertical axis. These controls make it turn, uh, move laterally fore and aft, and you'll see that as we fly it. And of course, once you take it, uh, hands off the controls, it'll stabilize at that point in space. So we will put the smartphone or your smartphone in place. I have an iPhone that works with Android and smartphones. And then we'll go ahead and turn it on. We'll turn on the drone and then the controller. We're going to do it outside. The whole thing works better when the drone is communicating and linking up with GPS. So we'll do it out outside the garage for that. We're outside now, so we'll go ahead and turn on the drone, get that powered up, turn on the controller, and it'll take about 50 seconds for them to talk and link up to each other. We'll come back, we have a good picture on the uh, smartphone. So we have everything connected. This is the view of the neighborhood looking through the camera in the drone. We'll get the both controls to the um, five o'clock, seven o'clock position. It'll start up and we'll take off with this. So this is how we start it. And you can see this right now. So we just advanced the throttle. And so here the drone is hovering. Again, very stable flight. Everything's fine. Just maintains its position. You do some throttle, it gets lower altitude. And there's the land, you simply pull the throttle all the way to low, hold it there, and the drone will land itself. And everything's complete. This is a still picture taken by the drone. You can see the quality even in the shadows of the garage. Let's now take a look at my smartphone. This is a screen recording. We're not flying. I just want to go through some of the modes of the, of the screen. We have the controls lower right. This is what you see as you fly the drone. We'll go up to the three buttons at the upper right. This is a safety mode. You can see the beginner is on with the flight distance, height, and so forth. We can turn that off and we can set our flight distances and heights for the beginner mode and save that. The settings is the middle one. You can see there's watermarks, recording, voice prompts, things of that nature. And finally, the track to keep track of your various flights. Now we'll go back to the home screen and take a look at the camera functions on the right. You've got the still, the video, the red button to uh, take the pictures. This is the library of photos and videos. Back to the main screen on the left side, we've got the intelligent flight modes, GPS follow, image follow. Good information on the instructions how to use these various modes. The return to home uh, in that middle button, slide to confirm, the upper one to automatic takeoff, and you just slide to start the motors. Then we go back to the main screen. This is uh, getting ready to actually fly with the drone. So here we're looking out the camera from the drone. We're on the uh, driveway and we're doing a vertical takeoff with the left stick. This is a screen recording. This is what you see as you fly the drone. You can see the distance, height, uh, uh, vertical and uh, velocities there in the lower corner. Your GPS uh, signal, upper right, battery state, and just a very pretty stable picture with a drone. Just a, a very, very pleasing image. Now we are taking the 
picture directly from the drone. It's not a screen recording. This is without that overlay. We take it off and we're just kind of rotating around. You can see what it, there's a shadow of the drone down there. What an incredibly clear, steady picture it is. It was a fairly windy day, but the drone was just absolutely rock steady. The pictures, I just don't think, could be much better. So now with the left stick, we're just kind of moving the drone around. You know, we can adjust the elevation. We're getting a little bit lower. Uh, returning back to the driveway for an automatic landing. And again, just very steady. And you can see, even in the garage with a lot of shading, the pictures are very well balanced. It really is a nice experience flying with this drone. Thank you very much for joining me in this video of the Ruko U11 Mini 4K drone. Very nice drone, excellent pictures, small, lightweight. I like it a lot.